the 100th Psalm says, Shout out praises to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with joy. Enter his presence with joyful singing. Proclaim that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him thanks. Praise his name. For the Lord is good. His loyal love endures. And he is faithful to all generations. Welcome to Greater Cleve Church. For the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. What do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Deciding to tithe can often seem like a difficult choice. House payments, school costs, rising gas prices, medical bills, food and entertainment all compete for the limited funds that we earn, and oftentimes it's much easier to justify these needs than it is to heed the call to give. But this call is not meant as a hindrance to our physical needs. Rather, it is given in the Bible as a way for us to grow closer to God as we trust in His provision. So let's look at three biblical and practical truths that are meant to help us trust God with our finances. Truth number one. All our money belongs to God. Psalm 24.1 tells us, The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. This truth begs the question of not how much of my money should I give, but how much of God's money should I keep for myself. Truth number two. 
giving away a portion of our income to the work and ministry of Christ helps us fight covetousness. Wanting things too much is incredibly dangerous for our souls. In Matthew 6.24, Jesus paints a clear picture telling us that we cannot serve both God and money. Truth number three. Tithing and giving beyond regular tithe will help strengthen our faith in God's promises. Philippians 4.19 tells us that God will meet all our needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. The more we find and trust promises like this, the easier tithing becomes because they replace our fear of not having what we need with a reliance on God. And just like these three truths, all the other biblical teachings about money are designed by God to help us trust and rely on Him and not on the things that we own. In Matthew 6.21, Jesus tells us, Where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. In terms of money, this is saying that what we invest our money in is a signal of what our hearts are trusting in. So each time we face the decision to give or not to give, remember that it boils down to a faith question. Do I trust God's promises concerning my finances?
Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. God, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. Lord, allow my will to be lost in thine. This is your servant's prayer. God, I can't preach until the preacher comes. So Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. I won't take the credit, but I'll give you the praise and glory on this great day. This is our prayer, and we say thank you. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Together we say amen. Giving honor to God who is father and mother. God is everything to me, to my big brother Jesus the Christ, who has risen again, saved us by his own blood to the comfort of all of our lives, the Holy Spirit, the one who encourages us, intercedes on our behalf, and reminds us of what Christ has told us. We greet you in the name of him who keeps us all from falling. Whether you are on our live stream today, if you're on the conference call, if you're on Facebook, YouTube, whichever social media, or media platform that you're using today, we give God praise for you. and We say thank you for joining us. We hope and pray that you can say when it's all said and done, that I got exactly what I needed from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord today found in the gospel according to John. Amen. John chapter 20. We want to start at the 19th verse. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, and it says these words. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. Verse 20, as soon as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and the wound in his side. Then they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. For a few moments, I want to speak from the subject matter. Don't write me off just yet. Amen. Don't write me off just yet. If you got haters and people who have been in opposition against you, you need to just write on your Facebook page. You don't have to direct it at anybody. You don't have to tell anybody off, but just write the message. Don't write me off just yet. I'm actually starting this message from a conversation that I heard by a news reporter earlier this week. The conversation was about uh, the situation regarding Tiger Woods and the terrible accident that he has experienced. Not to bring any attention to the accident per se, but, but the reporter said these words. He said, if there is anything, if there is one thing that I have learned about Tiger Woods is that you should never write him off. I can imagine, beloved, in the, in the reporter's mind that he was recalling all of the times when, when others had written Tiger off, when Tiger had gone through the challenges in his personal life with, with, with challenges mentally and emotionally, and even with challenges in his physical body, when the tabloids and when the critics were attempting to eulogize his legacy, Tiger would somehow 
bounce back to silence his critics. Amen. He would somehow find uh, the ability and the strength to overcome uh, his oppressors. Not only would he bounce back, but Tiger had the ability to bounce back and win on the grand stage of uh, the, the biggest events, even after all of the back surgeries. After all of the accidents, after all of the public scrutiny, something in Tiger would fight back, amen, within himself to, uh, to overcome what otherwise would have been a tragic ending. I believe today, saints of God, people will write you off for, for no reason at all. I believe today that, that, that people uh, have a great ability of knowing how uh, to write others off. There are three things, three reasons why I believe people will write you off. The first reason people will write you off is because uh, they don't know God's plan for your life. If they knew the plan of God for your life or if they could see how God sees you, then perhaps they would be a little more patient, a little more long-suffering. Maybe they would be a little more tolerant with what you are dealing with. Amen. Perhaps they would be a little more encouraging, but, but because they can only see but so much of what God is doing in your life, people will tend, hallelujah, to write you off. It, it doesn't matter what they've got going on in their lives. It doesn't matter how situations may look around them. If if they have been misinformed, if they don't have the inside information, if they don't have uh, the full picture of what you have going on, uh, then it is easier for them to dismiss what you've got going on in your life. Secondly, people will write you off, beloved, because what they witnessed you go through has confirmed to them uh, that your story should be over. Amen. Sometimes people are convinced by what they see. And if your situation has any appearance that resembles death or an ending, then people, even people close to you, can be quick to write you off because in their minds there is no coming back from what they saw you go through. Matter of fact, they can only base what they saw you go through off the last instance of somebody else's story. And in the last story, the person didn't bounce back. In the last story, amen, they were not able to recover. So the only thing they could fathom in their minds is that the same thing will happen to you. The only thing that they can envision in their minds is what happened to somebody else will also be the, res the results of your story too. And so because the last person didn't make it, because the last person didn't get the promotion, because the last person didn't survive the illness, because the last person didn't come out of the test, the only thing that they can associate with you is what they saw the last person go through. And so uh, in order for them not to be disappointed by your story, it's easier for them uh, to just write you off rather than to believe that God uh, can do something special in your life. Can I go deeper to this morning, beloved? Maybe you are the person that they saw go through the last time. And here you are again going through the same situation or, or something that looks similar that reminds them of what you had to go through before. Maybe the last time you went through it was not good for you and it, and it may have cost you some stuff. Maybe you lost a relationship in the ordeal. You, you may have developed some health challenges as a result of your last sickness. You might have lost the last job because of the situation and the only thing your spectators can say and see is here you go again you are back in the same place some folk will write you off just because they don't have the power to believe God for something different for you this time and and so they will write you off or they will simply dismiss your case the third reason why people will write you off is because uh, when they can't comprehend or understand your narrative, uh, 
amen, when it doesn't make sense to them, uh, they, they simply write it off, especially when you are operating according to the spirit. What are you saying here, preacher? Oftentimes, uh, spiritual matters will confuse uh, worldly thinking. This is why Jesus, when Jesus uh, spoke in parables, the people uh, would lash out at Jesus. They would condemn what he was saying because uh, they couldn't understand uh, what he was saying. They could only understand it if they were operating in the spiritual sense, but because uh, they were operating in the natural they couldn't understand uh, what Jesus was saying come here Isaiah 6 9 and 10 uh, the Bible says in Acts 28 uh, when when the apostle Paul uh, after reaching out to the brethren from uh, his place of confinement Paul uh, began to witness to them from uh, the Bible says it was from morning uh, unto evening about the kingdom of God and and as Paul is uh, uh, witnessing to him to them he tried uh, to persuade them about Jesus and while the Bible said some believed there were others uh, who did not and when Paul began to quote the words of Isaiah chapter 6 the Bible says uh, that some begin to leave after Paul uh, makes his final statement listen beloved everybody won't believe your story everybody won't be on your side Everybody won't be cheering in your corner. Some folk will write your story off because uh, when people don't understand your story, they will simply find a way to dismiss it. Uh, understand that they are not trying to hurt you. They are not trying to punish you, but, but they can't handle what they see uh, or what they hear and what they experience uh, of what God is capable of doing in uh, your life. Here it is. Paul uh, is in prison. Did you hear what I said? Paul uh, is in confinement, but he is witnessing uh, about a Jesus that can set you free. Some of y'all just missed it. Paul is in confinement, but he is preaching about the kingdom of God, which provides us with freedom. The apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 28, he's, he quotes Isaiah. He says, the Lord said to the prophet, go to this people and say, you will ever be hearing, but never understand. You will ever be seeing, but never be able to perceive it for this people's heart has become callous. They have hardly uh, heard with their ears and, and they have closed their eyes. Others might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, unders, understand uh, with their hearts and turn. And then uh, God says, I will have to heal them. Uh, will you help me close this message today? Saints of God, uh, every Everybody won't be on your side. Everybody won't hear your testimony. Everybody won't be able to see what God is doing in your life. But you need to tell somebody today, I know you see me where I am. I know you see what I got going on, but don't write me off just yet. God is not done with me yet. There is still uh, some work for God to do uh, in my life. Uh, in our text, this post-resurrection story, it gives us a glimpse of Jesus's testimony to the disciples the bible says that they were locked away in fear uh, trying to figure out what they would do next because uh, what they had seen uh, was not lining up with what they had heard uh, amen they saw jesus from afar uh, and we know that the disciples saw jesus dying uh, on an old rugged cross they saw jesus breathe out his last breath Breath. They saw Nicodemus and Joseph take Jesus's body off the cross and wrap it in linen. They saw the ladies prepare his body and they saw the men uh, place it in the tomb where a huge stone was placed uh, over it. Now, based upon their understanding, beloved, those who died uh, never came back from the grave. Well, there was that one time when when Jesus raised Lazarus, but but Jesus was the one who was responsible for that moment. And the very one who was responsible for the moment is the same one who is now dead himself. And so in their minds, even though Jesus had told them that he would rise again, the only thing that they could trust in the moment was what they had previously experienced. And what they had previously experienced was that everybody 
who they knew who died, who went to the grave, stayed in the grave. Remember I said people will base your story off of what they've seen somebody else go through. The Bible tells us that the disciples were in fear. Even though Mary had just told them prior to that she saw the Savior with her own eyes. That they were still afraid and so they decided to lock themselves away. But in the midst of their fears, in the midst of them writing off what Jesus had told them, the Bible says that Jesus appeared. Listen, beloved, I don't know if he came through a wall. I don't know. It's not clear if Jesus came through the floor. We don't know if he came descending down from the ceiling or if it was a, a supernatural move of God and he just uh, appeared through the door. But, but the Bible is clear that Jesus appears in the room with the disciples. And when Jesus shows them his hands and his side, when they, they recognized who he was, the word of God says that, that Jesus shows them and they begin to be happy. They begin to be comforted. Don't miss this, uh, saints of God. Uh, when they saw him, they were awestruck and they were overjoyed. Can I speak life right here for you, beloved? When people uh, dismiss your story, when they uh, dismiss what you are going through, and, and when folk dismiss uh, what you have told them, you, you have to leave room for grace so that people can come back because uh, when God uh, lifts you up out of your situation, uh, you will need that same room for people uh, to celebrate with you when they encounter what God has done in your life. Can I preach this sermon here? Some folk may have counted it, you out. They may have uh, let you down. Some folk uh, may have already wrote you off and, uh, and they don't think that you'll be able to recover because cause of what you are going through but I need you to know uh, on this great day uh, that God is still uh, able to bring uh, your story back to life uh, God is still able to give you uh, what you need uh, you might be on your hospital bed but don't let the bed write you off uh, because God is still able uh, you might be down to your last dime and your bill might be stacking up but don't uh, let the collectors write you off why because God is still able uh, you may not be where you want to be in life uh, and it may seem like everybody around you uh, is prospering while you are still uh, taking steps back uh, but don't think of this as a, a time when God uh, has written you off uh, and don't allow your situation uh, to write you off because uh, of your circumstances but I am a believer today that God is still able to bring you what you need you may not be able to control the narrative of how people might write you off you may not be able to control what people will say about you but one thing I have learned is that you can control how you will respond to it you can control what you do in response to the situation. If I can call on the psalmist, David said in the 121st Psalm, he said, I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. David said that my help comes from the Lord. I believe the psalmist wants us to know today that the Lord knows how to keep our foot from slipping. The psalmist wants us to know today that when others have tried to write you off uh, that the Lord is still working it out for your good uh, how do you know that preacher uh, the psalmist says the Lord never slumbers nor does the Lord sleeps uh, when they try to silence your testimony uh, the psalmist says uh, that the Lord will protect you uh, God will watch over you uh, not only will God watch over you uh, but the psalmist says that the Lord will watch your go 
going out and your coming in. Don't let them write off your testimony. Don't let them steal your joy. You can't write my story off just yet. Why? Because the best is still yet to come. The word of God tells us that eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men what the Lord has in store for those who love them. Don't write off your story just yet but I am a believer that God will make a way out of no way I'm a believer today that God knows how to make a way in your wilderness and God can provide a fresh river to run through your desert I know it may look bleak right now you don't know how you're going to get through it but don't allow them to write off your story the Lord is not done with you yet don't write off my testimony the Lord will see me through and when God sees me through I'm going to remind you that the Lord is able don't write me off God is still at work don't write me off the Lord will provide don't write me off this is just a test but God will I say God will God will make my test my testimony don't write me off just yet the Lord is still working and God will see you through God bless you may God keep you is our prayer we've all faced one a threshold a point of decision a moment of choice do we stay or do we go what awaits us on the other side? Will we cross the line from guilt to freedom, fear to faith, from doubt to trust, from darkness to light, from death to life? So you're here at the threshold. What will you do? Praise be to the name of the Lord. What an awesome message for this morning. Don't write me off just yet. Listen, when people try to write you off, when situations and when your struggles are trying to write you out of history, you just remind yourself that God is doing something special in your life and that if you just continue to trust God, everything will work out just fine. Listen, the enemy tried to write you off this morning. He said you weren't going to make it. He, he said this week that you wouldn't survive through the week, but look at God working in your life. Don't write me off just yet. When people and things try to write you off, understand and know in that time that God is doing something special in your life. Listen, I want to invite you and encourage you to continue to trust God, continue to believe the report of the Lord. Whose report shall you believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord today. Listen, this is the opportunity to extend uh, in the invitation to discipleship for, for those of you who may not know the Lord as your Savior. I want you to know that over 2,021 years ago that Jesus Christ gave his life Life just so that you might have life and freedom in him. And today we celebrate our risen savior. We celebrate his resurrected story. And we want you to know that you can be a part of that celebration. I want you to know that Christ died for you too, so that you might have a right to life eternal with him. But you've got to do one thing. You've got to commit yourself. You've got to connect with the Lord. You've got to invite and open your heart and allow God to enter in so that you might sup with God and God can sup with you. If you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins, if you've never confessed the Lord as Jesus, as, as Savior of the world, then I want to encourage you today to receive him into your life. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for this word. Thank you, God, for reminding us that we're not written off. Thank you, God, for reminding us 
that our story still yet lives. God, we still have a testimony. You are still working, Lord God, in the midst of our story. God, I pray for my sister and my brother right now who doesn't know you, who has not uh, uh, made a connection with you, God. I pray for them right now, Lord God, that you would cause them to know who you are today. God, enter into their house, into their home, enter, Lord God, into the very place of their heart. Receive them as your child now, God. We thank you that you receive us, God, while we were yet in our sin. We thank you, God, that you received us, God, when we could not go any further. We thank you, God, that you sent your your son Jesus to die for us that we might have life with you forever. Now, God, we confess our sins before you. God, we lift up our transgressions. We lift up, God, our hearts before you and ask that you would forgive us of our sins. And now, God, receive us into the household of faith. We thank you, God, for this new birth date. We thank you, God, for this new celebration. We thank you, God, that when all else has failed us, God, you still continue to keep us. We give you praise and glory, and we say thank you from the depths of our beings. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Together we say amen. Listen, my sister and my brother, if you have prayed that prayer, know today that God has accepted you into the household of faith. Know today that the angels are rejoicing in heaven with you for your life. Know today that eternal life belongs to you. No longer do you have to confess that you don't know Jesus, but you can now affirm, you can say with a loud shout that Jesus is mine. The Lord is my savior. He is Lord of my life. And because he is Lord of my life. I have been granted eternal life with him. Listen, we need you to do one thing for us because you can't stop there. Now you have to uh, uh, affirm your faith. Now you have to lock in with like believers. Now you have to get connected with a church that is either local to you or a church that you can connect with. We want to invite you to come and be a part of the Great Ecclesiastes Connection. Listen, if you come here, we got a place for you. Amen. I need you to do one thing for me. Call this number 405 Four two seven six nine zero five. Get connected with us. You can also email us at cleves two at coxinet.net. Again, that's cleves two at coxinet. Dot net. We need you to contact us. Leave us your name. It could be your first name. It could be your phone number. Leave us some information that we can dial back and or that we can respond to you via email so that we can connect with you again. We celebrate you. We are so grateful and thankful for what God will do in your life. I know some people and some things have tried to write you off. The enemy has said that you were done, but look at God working in your life right now. We celebrate you and we give God thanks for you. If you say, Pastor Dunbar, I appreciate the invitation, but Great Ecclesiastes is not the place of my choice. Maybe you are uh, worshiping in a different denomination. Maybe you are in a different state. Listen, we need you to connect with the church right now. We need you to get connected. If you say, Pastor Dunbar, I don't know where to go, give us a call. We have some, some friends all over this country, literally all over this world where we can connect you, but we want to be a part of your experience. Again, dial us 405-427-6905. Give us a call so that we can help you on this journey. If you know of a church, a pastor, where you can connect, I want you to get in contact with them and let them know that on this day, you gave your life to the Lord. We are so excited for you and we celebrate the Lord with you. And we thank God that right when people try to write you off, God is doing something miraculous, something spectacular in your life so that others, when they see what God is doing, they will see the good works that God is working in you, but then that they're gonna glorify God who is in heaven. God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. We look forward to your testimony. We look forward to your serve, to your story. We look forward to meeting you. We look forward to the opportunity of getting to know you. Until then, feed your faith. You'll starve your doubts to death. Have a great day. God bless you. Let us now receive the benediction. God, we thank you for this testimony that when others have written us off, when others have forgotten our story, God, that you are still working on our behalf. 
We thank you on this morning, God, on this great day that we can go forward saying in our hearts with confidence that our story is still yet to be told. The end is not written yet and there is still more to my story. Don't write me off just yet. God, we pray that as we leave this worship experience, God, that we will hold our heads up that we will walk in confidence. Help us, God, on this day to trust you beyond all of our own understanding. Help us, God, to go forward, Lord, believing and trusting that you are still writing, Lord God, the, 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 the parables. You're still writing, God, the, the paragraphs and the words to our testimony. And we say thank you. It's unto you, the one who is able to keep us all from falling. It's to you, the one who brings us joy, the one who is able to present us before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy. It's to you, the only wise God, that we give praise, we give honor, we give dominion, all dominion, glory, and honor belongs to you. And we say thank you on this day. God, we give you praise. It's in the matchless and mighty name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Together we shout amen. Come on, say amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. We pray that you have been blessed by the word and the worship today. We thank God for you joining us. If you desire to give a contribution to Greater Cleaves Church, you can give by the following names. If you desire to give by the Cash App, our tag is the dollar sign, capital G, T R, capital C, Cleaves, and then capital C for church. Again, that's G T R. Cleves Church. You can also give through the Givelify app. Just search for us on Givelify. Our church, you will see a picture of the church. You will also see an inset of Pastor Dunbar. Or if you desire, you can either mail or drop off your contribution at the church. That location is 1609 Northeast 48th Street. In Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, zip code is 73111. Again, thank you for your contribution and thank you for being a blessing to Greater Cleves Church. Until next time, feed your faith. You'll starve your doubts to death. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.